Welcome to this video. This is Mark Scythian, FAA licensed aerospace technician, airframe power plant and avionics certified. The date today is January 24th, 2017. This analysis will focus on the 2014 Chevrolet Volt and 2014 Toyota Prius hybrid electric automobiles in terms of power required to maintain a given cruise speed. The goal of this analysis is to calculate which of these hybrid electric automobiles requires less power when driving at a constant speed of 70 miles per hour on level, paved, and dry highway road conditions. The 2014 Toyota Prius requires 14% less power than the 2014 Chevrolet Volt when operating at a cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on paved, level, and dry road. This video will mathematically prove why the 2014 Toyota Prius requires 14% less power than the 2014 Chevrolet Volt to maintain a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on paved, level, and dry road. But first, a brief introduction. Newton's first law of motion, the law of inertia, states that objects in motion will stay in motion unless an outside force or forces oppose an object's motion. Conversely, objects at rest will stay at rest unless an outside force or forces opposes an object's position at rest. The forces opposing an automobile's motion on dry, level, and paved road are aerodynamic drag and tire rolling resistance. The most power consumption takes place during the acceleration of a vehicle from rest to cruise speed. However, after a vehicle has reached cruise speed with zero acceleration or deceleration, the amount of power to maintain steady cruise speed is only a fraction of the power required to accelerate the vehicle. Based on the law of inertia, an object in motion will stay at a constant speed provided the forces opposing its forward motion are overcome. This requires a continual delivery of power equal to the forces opposing a vehicle's motion to maintain a steady cruise speed. If an automobile is moving up a hill or down a hill, then the gravitational acceleration gains and losses play into the calculation. To calculate the additional power required to travel up a hill or the subtractive power gains going down a hill, this is accomplished by using the following formulation. The power required to maintain steady cruise speed plus or minus the same value times the sine of the degree of the angle of hill relative to the horizontal plane. So of course, you're going to add if going up a hill you're going to subtract of going down a hill. However, this analysis is based on the power required to keep an automobile at constant speed when driving on paved, dry, and level road at a certain elevation above mean sea level and a certain air temperature. Momentum, mass times velocity of an object or vehicle in motion has as many gains or losses between acceleration and deceleration that the trade-offs are equalized. The proof of this is that even though a heavier object has additional momentum energy to assist in its motion, it also incurs greater losses in power during acceleration and variations in road slopes and hills, canceling out assumed power gains. Conversely, a lighter vehicle requires less power to accelerate, but also requires more power to overcome aerodynamic drag and tire rolling resistance, canceling out any assumed power gains. Therefore, momentum will not be included in this analysis due to the fact the power gains and losses regarding momentum are summarily equalized. Assuming Assume that headwind is non-existent during forward motion of both vehicles. However, if headwind is consistent and known, this value can be added to the vehicle's constant speed to calculate accurate airspeed. That being said, we can now proceed with the analysis, which proves that the 2014 Toyota Prius requires 14% less power than the 2014 Chevrolet Volt to maintain a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on dry, paved, and level road. The relevant specifications for this analysis are as follows. The 2014 Chevrolet Volt has a vehicle weight of 3,786 pounds, an aerodynamic drag coefficient of 0.28, and a projected frontal area, also known as drag area, of 23.7 20, square feet. Whereas the 2014 Toyota Prius has a vehicle weight of 3,042 pounds, aerodynamic drag coefficient of 0.26, and a projected frontal area, or a drag area, of 23.9 square feet. We will have to make four calculations to complete this analysis of both vehicles. The first is the atmospheric pressure in pounds per square inch, the air density in slugs per cubic foot, the power to overcome aerodynamic drag in watts, and the power to overcome tire rolling resistance in foot pounds per second. So the typical highway cruise speed conditions are 70 mile per hour cruise, air temperature 59 degrees Fahrenheit, elevation above mean sea level 900 feet, and road conditions dry level and paved. So if we mathematically calculate atmospheric pressure at 900 feet elevation above mean sea level, we can implement this formula. We take 900 feet, divide it into this value, subtract it from 1, take into the exponential power, 
uh, 5.255876 multiplied times this quantity multiplied times 14.7. So at 900 feet above mean sea level, the atmospheric pressure will be 14.23 p 14 psi. The air density in slugs per cubic foot at 900 feet elevation above mean sea level and 59 degree Fahrenheit air temperature would be equal to the constant of 29 times the atmospheric pressure in PSI times 0 0.031, the number of slugs weight to one pound, divided into the ideal gas law constant for air, 10.73, times the degrees rank in absolute air temperature, so degrees Fahrenheit plus 460, so we get a air density of 0 .2, 0 0.00229 slugs per cubic foot at the given elevation and air temperature. Next, we access the 2014 Chevrolet Volt specifications, so we can calculate the power required to air overcome aerodynamic drag in watts. We can use this formula here, enter in the values. We're cubing the oncoming airspeed in feet per second because we're calculating for power in watts to overcome aerodynamic drag. So when we multiply all four variables out, divide it by two, it will require 8,206.4 watts of power to overcome the aerodynamic drag on the 2014 Chevrolet Volt when at a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on level, paved, and dry road. There's 746 watts to one horsepower, so when we divide out the power required to overcome aerodynamic, aerodynamic drag of 8,206.4 watts, divided by 746, 11 brake horsepower. The 2014 Chevrolet Volt's powertrain will require a constant power delivery of 11 brake horsepower to overcome aerodynamic drag when at a constant cruise speed of 70 miles per hour. Next, we access the 2014 Chevrolet Volt specifications once again so that we can calculate the power required to overcome tire rolling resistance in foot-pounds per second at a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on level, dry, paved road. So we can use this formula here to calculate the power to overcome tire rolling resistance, which requires the automobile weight in pounds times the automobile constant speed in feet per second times the coefficient of tire rolling resistance, in this case 0 0.012, which is uh, designated for automobiles and light trucks under 8,000 pounds rolling on dry, paved, and level road. So when we do so, when we multiply these out, it will require 4,661.3 foot-pounds sec per second of power to overcome the tire rolling resistance for the 2014 Chevrolet Volt when at a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on level, paved, and dry road. There's 550 foot-pounds per second to one horsepower. So when divided out, 8.5 brake horsepower the 2014 Chevrolet Volt powertrain will require a constant power delivery of 8.5 brake horsepower to overcome tire rolling resistance when at a constant cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on level, paved, and dry road. Brake horsepower is the actual power available at the output drive of an engine or motor used to move an automobile, vehicle, or machinery after losses to keep engine or motor running are factored out or the friction horsepower. So the total brake horsepower output required to keep the 2014 Chevrolet Volt at a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on dry level and paved road is equal to 11 brake horsepower to overcome aerodynamic drag plus 8.5 brake horsepower to overcome tire rolling resistance when at a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on, on dry level and paved road to equal 19.5 brake horsepower. So we repeat the calculation again both calculations for the 2014 Toyota Prius. Same calculation methodology as previously for the 2014 Chevrolet Volt. So 10.3 horsepower is required to overcome aerodynamic drag on the 2014 Toyota Prius. When at a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on level paved and dry road in typical driving environmental conditions. So then we do the same for calculating the power to power required to overcome tire rolling resistance in foot pounds per second when at a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on level paved dry road for the 2014 Toyota Prius. So it requires 6.8 brake horsepower to overcome tire rolling resistance on the 2014 Toyota Prius when at a constant cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on level paved dry road in typical environmental driving conditions. So the total brake horsepower required to keep the 2014 Toyota Prius at a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on dry level and paved road is equal to 10.3 brake horsepower 
to overcome aerodynamic drag, plus 6.8 brake horsepower to overcome tire rolling resistance, to equal a total of 17.1 brake horsepower, continual power to keep the 2014 Toyota Prius at a constant cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on dry, level, and paved road. So if we account these specifications and analysis calculations for both vehicles, 19.5 brake horsepower to maintain 70 mile per hour cruise speed for the 2014 Chevrolet Volt and 17.1 brake horsepower to maintain 70 miles per hour cruise speed for the 2014 Toyota Prius. So if we take the fractional ratio of the Volt compared to the Prius, minus one times 100, 14%. So the final conclusion is the Toyota, uh, the 2014 Toyota Prius will require 14% less power compared to the 2014 Chevrolet Volt to maintain a steady cruise speed of 70 miles per hour on dry level and paved road in typical elevation and air temperature conditions. This analysis has mathematically proven the statement as fact. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe, and have a great day.